The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. Uh, I am Dr. Paramjeet. I am a consultant, physician and cardiologist in Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital uh, in Nehru Nagar, Delhi NCR. So I will be talking about heart disease and, and uh, can it be prevented and other things. So heart attack, can it be prevented? So first we will talk about this, this information is basically a verified information which has been taken from the US National Medical Library. So you can trust every single word which is written in this, right? So it's not a, only, uh, it's not an opinion of a single doctor, okay? So first of all that. So let's talk about heart attack, whether it can be prevented and why it happens. So what first we'll understand what is heart attack, all right? So basically your heart is a structure which is working like a muscular pump, okay? Its work, its basic function is to pump blood throughout the body and then receive that blood black into its right side. So it has two parts, right? We all know that we have studied in uh, science and uh, basic, you know, in our schools. So heart attack basically happens whenever there is a blockage in the blood flowing to the heart muscles. Basic work of your heart is to pump blood to the rest of your body but uh, there are small blood vessels which actually supply blood to the heart so if you can see this image which is which is shown you will see small blood vessels over the heart which is coming from the above right those are actually coronary arteries those are the blood vessels which supply blood to the heart okay so if one of them gets blocked there are three main vessels right side left side and the left side is divided into two so if one of them gets blocked, then what happens? It's a muscle. It will not get blood. If some part of your heart is not getting blood because of the lack of oxygen and nutrients at that time, because heart cannot stop functioning. It's a continuously working organ. So it will face something called ischemia. Okay. Ischemia means a lack of oxygen in order to do its work, to contract and relax and contract. Both this Contraction and relaxation needs oxygen. So if there is any kind of even partial or near total or total blockage of blood supply to any part of your heart, then it's a heart attack. Okay. If it's a small part, it might be a minor attack. If it's a major huge part, then it can be a major attack and any kind of attack will damage that organ, right? If that big part of your heart muscles are damaged and heart can literally stop. Okay. So it can be fatal. Why does this happen? Blockage is most often because of something called as a plaque. Okay, a plaque which is basically made up of cholesterol, fat and other substances, platelets and other molecules which are already present in the blood. Okay, basically they stick to the walls of your arteries, but they do not stick everywhere. Okay, they, they, pur they have a purpose. Okay, they basically stick to any damaged part of your arteries. Okay, if there is a blood supply, blood vessel, which has a small damage even if your skin gets damaged you can see that the skin there will be clotting happening and the clot why will form like a elevated kind of a bump okay you can feel the bump whenever there is a clot in your skin right <clears throat> outside even outside when the blood is stopped same thing happens inside if inside anything damages your blood vessels then your cholesterol and your platelets and uh, a lot of fat gets deposited, fibrin molecules that gets deposited and they form a plaque. Initially, this plaque is a soft plaque, okay? And then slowly over a period of time, this plaque can become bigger and bigger because the plaque will become a sticky point in which other substances can come and stick. So this plaque will become bigger and over a period of time, this plaque can rupture. So if this plaque does rupture, then an acute bleeding can happen from that particular blood vessel inside the blood. So consider the situation. Blood, there is rupture of internal rupture of the blood vessels into the blood itself. So at that point, there is an acute, the whole of the blood uh, uh, clots there. So there is a big clot formation which blocks and interrupts the blood flow forwards and therefore damages the blood vessel uh, and as well as the blood supply to the proximal part. Proximal means the forward part of that uh, that artery. So what happens if such thing happens, it will again lead to a 
complete blockage of the blood vessel which will be a total 100% blockage in which case we basically call it as an acute heart attack. Heart attack in medical language is also called myocardial infarction and this can be fatal if it is uh, involving a big part of your heart. So let's understand this was the first method, first process which we saw which can cause a heart attack and this particular process is called atherosclerosis which is the first point here. So atherosclerotic plaque is basically the same thing which I explained which can happen over a period of time to every now that does not mean that if a clot or a atherosclerotic plaque is there it will happen only in your heart it happens everywhere in your body it can happen because such blood vessels are present throughout the body right now it's on the basis of your lifestyle on the basis of your genetics on the basis of your environment these all factors will determine which artery will have more blockages and whether or not you will have a heart attack first or you might have a stroke first in the brain or you might have an ischemia ischemic attack of your intestines so a lot of a lot of things can happen because of this particular disease which is atherosclerotic disease atherosclerotic plague okay so that's the first and most common method which basically will happen in everyone let me tell you there is not going to be one person in the world who does not have any atherosclerotic plaque in the body because it's a part of natural process okay so there is no way of of preventing it now understand but we can delay it okay any everybody who lives till the age of 100 will have atherosclerotic plaques throughout the body but but obviously if you live a bad life a bad lifestyle this process of aging it's a part of aging will be enhanced right a person living a bad life you will see that their skin is bad right they look 10 years older they are feeling older so obviously there are methods in which you can push this disease to a certain age so that you don't die of this problem okay so that's why lifestyle matters because of this you can actually control the factors which lead to you know premature atherosclerosis premature heart diseases and obviously there are some unique people in the world which might not have a lot of cholesterol deposits in their heart vessels. They might have some cholesterol deposits elsewhere in the body. Okay. And everybody will have that. First, I need, to, I need you to understand that. Right. So, there is no way of preventing any, you know, um, or every single atherosclerotic plaque. But yes, this is not the only way where you, this is not the only way because of which your heart can get damaged. There are two more ways. The other one is a spasm, coronary spasm. What happens, you must have seen that your blood vessels in your arm, they are dilated when you exercise. They become, they become big, they become swollen, right, during exercise and during winters, during cold, you don't see any blood vessels out even in your, in your hand, in the dorsum of your hand, you don't see but in summers and all, uh, you see them in the hot weather. So, this basically proves that your veins, these are the veins, your veins have a capacity to vasodilate and contract. The same way your arteries also have the capacity to dilate and contract, right? And arteries are inside, okay? So, it takes a higher degree of temperature change and a higher degree of issues to make them go into spasm. And there are some factors which can actually lead to a sustained spasm. When we talk about spasm, normally if there is a spasm and it, it goes, it relaxes immediately, then there is no such issue. But consider if you are, even if your fist goes into spasm and you are not able to open it, even if your fist goes into spasm and you are not able to open it for one hour, that will be a big issue. Even for five minutes, that will be a big issue. You'll think what is happening, right? Same thing can happen because with your blood vessel. Your blood vessel can go into spasm and it is not able to relax. So that can lead to that temporary cessation of blood supply, temporary stoppage of blood supply to the forward part, whatever blood vessel is going into spasm, right? So this is also a big factor and people who smoke, people who take, uh, you know, drugs, drug abuse people, uh, including any kind of anabolic steroids, any kind of, you know, uh, weight loss drugs, any kind of these kind of drugs, those are uh, medicines, those are substances which lead to coronary spasms, including bhang. Yes, bhang is a very strong agent which can lead to coronary or even blood vessel spasm throughout your body. So, coronary vessels are just one small, you know, one to three centimeter of three, three, four centimeter thick uh, blood vessels which can go into spasm because they are very small and they are end arteries. Therefore, people notice them first. 
rather than having a blood vessel spasm blockage in the hand because in the hand there are too many other blood supplies to compensate for any blockages but in the heart there are not so much so coronary spasm is one big life threatening kind of a situation also which can happen in addition to atherosclerosis then there can be a person who has a good amount of atherosclerotic pack plaque which might be blocking like 50% of the arteries and then that artery is going into spasm right so normally that artery is going into partial spasm and it might close only 50% of the area of other parts but in that area where there is already a 50% blockage that part will become completely closed so there are many circumstances overlapping in your body over the period of years this is not something which happens for a few days and then goes away it is going to happen repeatedly throughout your life and depends upon how you live then the third aspect is actually infections like covid right covid is just i'm taking an example of the recent thing which everybody knows covid is, was associated with a lot of heart attacks even the vaccine is being associated with a lot of clots being formed in your body so yes that is one more factor that other diseases which can increase the chances of clots formation into your body and those clots can go around and they can get stuck into these atherosclerotic packet uh, plaques in your heart or in your brain so that is also a serious thing but in these kind of infection there is also one possibility that infection will directly affect your heart just like say your tongue sometimes you get a severe throat infection you are say you you are not able to speak or your voice changes you say bola nahi ja you say i am not able to speak so this kind of an infection if it affects your heart your muscles of your heart then that part of the muscles will not able to pump so we call it myocarditis right that is the myocarditis mean muscular muscles of your heart is getting infected and that can cause temporary or permanent damage of the heart if that is not controlled in time okay so there are so many ways which can lead to damage of your heart or they can combine and lead to heart attack so then we'll talk about what kind of blockages can happen right there can be a complete or a partial blockage and according to these kind of blockages we see changes in ecg right if you have a complete blockage then then what it is what we call it as a myocardial infarction and we see a elevation in your ecg i'm not showing ecg here because that's not relevant to you but i'm just saying that we can predict just by looking into the ecg that yes you have a complete blockage and this needs and this an urgent situation same way a partial blockages might not show any any sign in ecg meaning even if your ecg is normal you might have a heart pain that's why we need additional tests in addition to ecg so diagnosis and treatment will depend upon what kind of blockages is there and what kind of symptoms you have right so what symptoms can you have if you have a partial or complete blockage of any blood vessel and that blood vessel is basically uh, controlling a big part of your heart you can feel pressure or tightness or pain or any kind of squeezing aching sensation in your chest or that can radiate anywhere near this area that can be you know feeling it's not necessary to feel pain or symptoms only on the left side because heart is on the left side no you can feel it in the center it can be a little bit below the uh, rib cage it can be in the neck it that depends upon which part of heart is affected if the upper part of the heart is affected it might be radiating to the neck if the left side of the heart is affected it will be radiating to the left arm if the down below part lower part of the heart is affected it might feign you might feel pain in the abdomen upper abdomen so any pain near this kind of an area which is increased during exertion right obviously when you exert when you walk when you run above run your heart rate increases and if there is a blockage and that heart has to work faster the symptoms should increase right so that is an exertional kind of a pain which we call angina so pain so right, any kind of thing around this area may be a heart attack it might be other things but there can be a heart attack so what we need to we need to see other symptoms if it is a heart attack especially if it is a lower heart attack you might feel nausea indigestion you can hear heart pain or heart burns or abdominal pains also you can feel that and uh, those symptoms can happen because of an abdominal infection also right because of other diseases also that's why a trained physician needs to judge according to your symptom according to sign according to ecg whether you have a heart attack or not then if your heart is being attacked and is not able to pump then obviously you will it you will feel fatigued because it's not heart is not pumping blood that efficiently throughout the body during that time and obviously the blood will back up into the heart and 
all the blood which is getting uh, received from the uh, lungs into the heart that lung will again have back pressure right just like a traffic jam there will be a traffic forward jam the backing up of the blood will be there so there will be increased pressure in your lungs and you will feel easy fatigability shortness of breath or sweating you will have a lot of sweating right that can happen sweating happens because you are afraid what is happening a sympathetic response happens all your small blood vessels they get contract so you uh, during this time because your blood heart is not able to pump forward so your body will stop all the unnecessary blood supply to your hands and try to adjust the blood supply to the vital organs because a less amount of blood is coming out of the heart but all the other parts of your your, your liver your kidneys your your intestines your brain they need blood so your body will adjust but still if it is not able to adjust then you will feel dizzy if your blood pressure starts dropping because your heart is not able to pump then you will feel dizzy you will feel light headed you might faint so this is how the symptoms of heart attack progresses sometimes uh, it can stop during any moment you might feel a little pressure and then it goes up then again you say it's okay nothing happened then again you are having the little pressure and go away whenever you are exercising you having a little pressure it goes up so it might be an early indication that you are having an angina on exertion at this this might be the time your indicate the indication of your body that something is wrong with the heart it's not 100% blockage it might be a partial 70% 80% blockages which is leading to some kind of symptoms if you don't attend to that if you don't do tests then it can in future near future become a serious heart attack variations can be there in these symptom like i said not everybody will have all the symptoms in the same exact manner some people will have a little pain and then it goes away some people will have pain for a few hours and then it goes away because of the spasm factor is there like i said there might be a blockage 70% plus there was a spasm for 10 minutes so patient had pain for 10 minutes and then it went away but still there is a 70% blockage so still there is a potential coronary artery disease right so there can be 100 variations of this kind of a scenario in you or other people so we have to find out whether you have a heart disease or not so even if you have mild pain or a severe pain some people can have less symptoms some people can have more symptoms and if you have diabetes or you have neuropathy because uh, the feeling of pain is only there only if there are nerves to actually sense the, that pain right you must have uh, heard about diabetic neuropathy where diabetic patients they don't feel pain in their legs and they end up with a big diabetic ulcer same thing can happen in their heart because of which they don't really feel pain even if your heart is getting damaged because of no blood supply so some people can have zero pain that we call as silent heart attack okay so first in these kind of a patient they don't really feel anything all they will feel is that if they are exercising they feel a little bit of chest heaviness and these patients can even present with a sudden heart attack heart cardiac arrest they basically have no symptoms just they come into the ar and they don't really their heart is not working or they are unconscious so these kind of severe on onset of symptoms can also happen however obviously many patients majority of patients will have some indications of disease in their uh, body which you should look for next slide let's understand what are the early signs of heart attack and what you should look for right some heart attacks uh, will have uh, warning signs okay which might be there for few hours or days like i said angina on exertion when you are walking when you are running there can be recurrent chest pain which is getting triggered by exertion right and that might be angina may is basically because of the temporary decrease in blood flow to the heart because of spasm or because of running because when you are running the heart has to work more and because of that uh, work increased workload it requires more blood and because of the blockages which is there in the heart that increased amount of uh, requirement of oxygen is not being fulfilled because of the reduced blood supply of the heart so that's also an indication that okay there is a blockage and it's a significant blockage okay that is there next slide let's understand what happens if you really what happens if your heart gets damaged because of a uh, reduced blood supply or uh myocarditis or any kind of damage to the heart right heart is a pump obviously number one your pump can fail or there can be because heart as pump has a rhythm right heart has a rhythm where the upper part contracts the lower part fills the lower part contracts and it goes out of the body right out of the heart into to the body basically so if this pump does not contract in synchrony if it contracts both contract together 
or one doesn't contract and the other contracts only or it doesn't really contract it just flickers all these things are called uh, arrhythmia rhythm problems they are basically because of problems of electrical circuits in the heart or damage to the heart muscles these all things can happen rhythm problem can happen and sometimes because of these rhythm problems heart can stop even if it was a small minor attack if it especially if it is actually uh, damaging the area which actually controls the rhythm the pacemaker in your heart the sa node av node which you might have heard there are sa node av node if they are damaged then the heart can literally uh, have, have arrhythmias and it can stop so it, that's a risk that does not mean that will happen to everybody but in many people it does happen so rhythm problems can happen second if there is a if you don't really open the heart attack uh, you know within a golden within a specified time within a few hours then heart can get damaged and the tissue damage can become permanent right and obviously like i said heart will not able to pump blood forward and the back of the back pressure will create a traffic jam of blood leading to heart failure the jam uh, blood will accumulate in the lungs increasing the pressure so lung pressure will make uh, what what does it do it basically uh, increases fluid accumulation in the lungs which we call pulmonary edema that leads to uh, shortness of breath initially you will have shortness of breath while walking only then you will have shortness of breath only while uh, sit while uh, standing also then you will have shortness of breath while lying down then you will have shortness of breath while sitting also so it will be a progressive dyspnea or shortness of breath on exertion progress this this is how that progresses next slide and if all this happens very fast if a huge clot is there in the base or root of the blood vessels involving more than 50 60% of your heart then your heart can actually suddenly stop without any warning so that can also happen because of a uh, and it can also happen because of the rhythm problem electrical uh, abnormality so heart attack rhythm problem major heart attack can all lead to cardiac arrest cardiac arrest does not mean heart attack cardiac arrest means heart cardiac means heart arrest means stop heart has stopped heart should not stop if that stops you are gone so cardiac arrest is much more serious than a heart attack and cardiac arrest can happen because of other reasons also but heart attack can lead to cardiac arrest so next slide so what can you do right what can you do if thus things such things happen if you feel any kind of heart pain or you see somebody feeling that immediately you should go or get them to a hospital you should ask for help do not try to drive yourself to a hospital because if you are really having a heart attack you might faint while driving right you might fail while driving you should call somebody or call a local hospital emergency for an ambulance but you should get to a hospital immediately next slide immediately what will they do in emergency during the emergency they will give you a few medications uh, usually there are some things which can be done immediately and there are some medicine which can help you might have heard about medicines which people keep below their tongue right sorbitrate or something these are nitroglycerin or nitrites what they do is basically they temporarily open the blood vessels they might open the blood vessel now it's not compulsory that they will open your cardiac coronary vessels also but they may open it right but the problem is they don't just open that blood vessel they will open all the blood vessels in your body and they will basically drop your blood pressure so you should not take them if you are already having a low blood pressure if you, you know if some people come into the emergency with a very low blood pressure and they say i take i took three tablets i took four tablets i took two tablets of this because doctor told me doctor always always says if you have any problem you take one tablet but then they say okay this can open blood vessel let me open them all that doesn't work like that if you open if you take if you take overdose it can lead to a serious side effects right because if blood pressure drops too much remember the blood which comes out the out of the heart needs to come back to the heart also if it does not come back taking the circle if the blood vessels opens too much it stays into the periphery there will be no blood coming into the heart and heart can stop so it's not so simple so you should never do self medication if, if uh, especially in a heart attack kind of a situation you should talk to a doctor the doctor should ask what's your blood pressure what's your pulse rate come to the hospital okay if you are not able to come take this medicine so the doctor will tell you what medicine to take and how much to take you should never take it by yourself and nitroid nitrates are one medicine which may be used but that's not does not mean they are 100% safe second 
Aspirin, aspirin, ecosprin, clopidogrel, desprin, all these are blood thinners, which basically are not really blood thinners, they are antiplatelets. Like I said, when the plaque ruptures, there is bleeding inside the blood vessel and active bleeding it has to be stopped. So there is a small, there in the blood vessel it's very small. So even if a small clot is there, it can partially, you know, stop or uh, block the blood vessel. And many times that blockage, that clot becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and does not really stop. And that leads to a big thrombus, a big clot which is blocking the entire diameter of the blood vessel. So antiplatelets basically prevent that clot to increase. They don't really dissolve the clots. Okay, they don't really dissolve the clots, and they don't really start working immediately. Okay, antiplatelets like desprin, aspirin, they will when we give you when when we give it to you from the mouth. Remember, they have to go inside the stomach, then get dissolved in the stomach, go into the small intestine. After one or two hours, they get absorbed into the liver, into the blood, into the liver. Then they go into the blood, then they reach the heart and it takes so much time to start even to start their action. And actually, the, the result of that blood, that tablet will take 24 to 48 hours. So really, those medicines are for the future because Basically, during a heart attack, what we say, it's a pro-coagulant state. That means clotting can happen repeatedly. Even if you open one blood vessel through medicine or through any way, the clot can happen in other blood vessels also. Or there may be a lot of clots. So basically, we have to give antiplatelets so that other clots do not form. So it's a part of treatment. It does not mean I took aspirin or I took disprin. Now I am not going to die. No. Okay. So if aspirin is recommended, you take it. But that can increase the risk of bleeding also. If somebody has, you know, already has risk of, you know, bleeding through piles or bleeding in these, a little bit of bleeding can happen. But that's the, that's where your doctor will judge whether that bleeding is very severe or this is an important aspect. Okay, next slide. So there are some medicines which your doctor can give immediately and there are some injections also. We're not talking about those, that here. But let's talk about uh, what you can do. Right. So if you see somebody, you should definitely check whether they are breathing or not, whether they have any pulse, whether they are OK, but never let them walk. Never let them do any work by themselves, because if they walk also, it will increase the pressure on the heart. Right. So that person should never walk. You should take that them in a wheelchair or a stretcher in an ambulance or a car immediately to the emergency center. Next slide. And if somebody is unconscious and says, I have a heart attack, I have a heart pain, then you, what you can do, you can do a CPR, right? All you can, if even if you don't know the actual method of CPR, you can just uh, push hard and fast in the sternum, central or part of the chest, just 100 to 120 times in a minute. You don't really have to know the exact method of doing CPR, even if you just do this, just start, start pushing and keep pushing till the person actually regains consciousness or ambulance arrives, then also you will save that person. So CPR is something which you should know about. And second, you can also see if there is something stuck in his throat or not, right? Next slide. So let's understand how you can prevent heart attack, right? Why people do have heart attack like i said it will happen to everybody but like just like death death will happen to everybody but that does not mean you should die at the age of 30 right so there are people who live a very bad life and they die young right so what can you do to actually live a normal life where your your heart attack actually happens after 70 or 80 years of age so you can do that by understanding the risk factors right obviously age is a big risk factor Right? Anybody who is over 45 or older, in, especially women, women uh, older than 55, they have a very high chance and men older than 45, they have a very chan high chance or uh, chance in the sense risk of having a heart attack. Now, then the biggest factor after age is stress. Nowadays, a stressful life basically increases those cracks inside the blood vessels because it increases inflammation into your body. So a lot of inflammation into your body increases your risk of heart attacks and any kind of stress, work stress, family stress, money stress, life uh, insomnia, not sleeping is a big issue, right? Third risk is obesity. Obesity is linked with all the bad things which you can think about, high cholesterol, high triglyceride, blood pressure, diabetes, you know, high inflammation into the body, not able to sleep, not able to exercise, cardiovascular issue systems are not really compliant. So it's bad. Obesity is really bad. Just losing 
ten percent of your body weight can lower your risk very significantly. So you should you should be you know your weight should be in a normal range. Then history of preeclampsia. What is this? Preeclampsia is high blood pressure during pregnancy. So any high blood pressure increases the risk of cracks into the uh, uh, into the blood vessels, and these cracks will be filled with cholesterols. Basically, cholesterol is important because if you don't fill the crack, right, your blood vessel can burst, and if it bursts, then you don't even get a time to go to the hospital. You will just your heart will stop, right? So it's important to mend the cracks also. So it does not mean that cholesterol is at fault. Okay, it means that your lifestyle needs to be accurate. right so your blood pressure your obesity your stress needs to be controlled cholesterol if it is very very high then it's a problem you should keep it under control so high blood pressure during pregnancy is called preeclampsia next slide and any blood pressure any blood pressure will increase the chances of more cracks and more inflammation into the blood vessels what about diabetes diabetes is very uh, a huge predictor you can say any diabetic patient will have heart disease if the diabetes is more than 10 or 20 10 years old will have uh, heart disease will have some atherosclerosis all over the body because diabetes is a pro inflammatory disease more sugar in, if it stays in your blood for a long period of time it is inflammatory inflammatory means it irritates the blood vessels it leads to more uh, you no know, spasms it leads to uh, more clottings inside the blood so it's bad so diabetes and insulin resistance is bad and it increases your heart attack risk same goes with metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome is obesity high blood pressure diabetes motapa um, uh, in sedentary lifestyle all those things so metabolic syndrome will lead to increased risk and tobacco smoking or chewing or even second hand smoke will lead to stiffness hardening of your blood vessel so if your blood vessels are hardened and next time they go into spasm they might not relax they might not be able to relax because of the smoke because of the spasm so it's not really the smoke going inside the blood vessels it's the particles from the smoke and in i'm not just talking about smoking even if you work in a smoky environment in like chulas and all that smoke can also uh, damage your blood vessels so all every smoke is bad tobacco smoke is 100 times bad than that next slide so these are the risk factors then a big risk factor is lack of physical exercise lack of physical exercise because physical exercise is the only single thing which can open additional blood vessels if there is a blockage in your heart right that we call it uh, as collaterals right so consider that there were three blood vessels in your heart and one gets blocked so what happens if you exercise regularly these two the rest of the blood vessels can actually and the, if there is a close by blood vessel if there is a branch these two will dilate slowly slowly increase their size to compensate for the blockage which is happening in the middle one so this only happens if you are regularly exercising if you are in you know if you don't really exercise even with the blockage your heart is getting a little little blood and that is sufficient for your heart because you are not exercising but if you exercise because that that blockage will not happen in one day it will happen over years and during that years if you are exercising slowly 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 your heart opens collateral blood vessels and even if that blood vessel gets blocked 100% you will not get a heart attack because du during that time your blood vessels are already covering the that particular part of the muscle which which will which will get collateral blood from the other part so that's why many people who smoke who are obese who are who and many army people who are smoking are obese they don't really get a heart attack because they have a habit of exercise they are smoking and they are having an habit of exercise so there are so many factors working together right into your body and this is one of the big factor lack of exercise lack of exercise smoking obesity lsi drug use illegal drug use including amphetamines or uh, you know bhang and other things smack autoimmune diseases autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis can also increase the risk of clots inside the body increase the inflammation into the blood vessels leading to again any inflammatory disease will lead to inflammation in the blood vessel leading to plaques leading to blockages and family history is also a big factor genetics is also a big factor meaning next slide if your father mother or close relative had a heart attack at the age of 50 you have a chance of having a heart attack 5 or 10 years younger if you have a bad lifestyle 
if you don't do testing. So you can have a heart attack five or 10 years younger. So such a serious problem this is. Then let's talk about high blood pressure. High BP, high cholesterol, high body fat, these are all, these are very important. And over a period of time, they damage the arteries leading to clottings, heart attack. High blood pressure increases the load on the heart also. And high blood cholesterol, so triglycerides, will increase the amount of cholesterol which gets deposited whenever there is an inflammatory crack inside the blood vessels. So increases increasing the amount of blockages there are, right? So you have to reduce all these things. You have to uh, reduce the bad cholesterol in your body and increase the good cholesterol. Okay, next slide. Now, <clears throat> remember to prevent this, it is much better than curing it afterwards, right? Once if after like 10 years of atherosclerosis has happened, there is no way of getting back to normal. You can just take, keep taking medicines, you know, have a good lifestyle and then uh, pray that you don't get a heart attack in future. And there, is, there will always be a, a chance of a repeated heart attack, even if you do any treatment, even if you get a stent or angioplasty or bypass surgery or any kind of treatment, you will still have a risk of having another heart attack. If you don't really have a good lifestyle from now, right, from the age of 20, if you don't really have a good lifestyle from the age of 30, you cannot expect to uh, you know, prevent this later on after the after a re uh, reaching to the age of 50 or 45. It's really not possible. But yes, medicines are there which can help. So you should take medicines if your doctor says and lifestyle factors are very important. Whatever I have said, including smoking, if you smoke, you have to stop. You have to eat a healthy diet, manage your stress, control your sugars, blood pressures, and most importantly, check them. If you don't really check them, many people don't check them. If you don't check them, you will not know what all risk factors you have. And you, if you wait for the symptoms, symptoms will not come immediately. Symptoms will come only when your body cannot handle it, right? Even if the temperature is increasing slowly, slowly, your body will not tell about it to you. Uh, if your eyes are closed and if you, if you don't really feel it, then uh, you know, you'll not burn your hand and when you start to burn, at that time your skin is getting damaged. So what I mean is prevention is better than cure and it's in your hands by living a healthy lifestyle. That's the only way to prevent heart attacks or push them away to a certain age where you live your life completely and then even if you die of other reasons, other reasons, you are not having any, you know, issues. So next slide. Thank you so much. This is all I think I've covered heart attack uh, in immense details. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.